Hi everyone, Miss Bader here with a quick tutorial on how to build an inverse function using Desmos. We've talked previously in class on what an inverse function is as the anti function to a function. What we're going to talk about today is how to build an equation that represents the inverse and notice some interesting visuals from the graphs. So what you see on this corner, the top left corner of your screen is an equation, y equals 1 half x minus 4, and this red line is the graph of that equation. What I'm going to show you, and we'll only be able to really do this in Desmos, we can't do it on a graphing calculator, is the way that you can build an inverse function is to transpose the x and y variables. So that would be basically switching x and y and leaving all the other parameters, the 1 half, the negative 4, leave those the same. So let's get to it. x equals 1 half y minus 4. Now you notice that this second function that we've just created pops up on your screen here as a blue line. Just a moment to let that sink in. And what we will see for every inverse function that we ever do is that one property of the inverse relationship is that the graphs reflect each other over the line y equals x. So you see this green line that we've just added is serving as a mirror for the blue inverse function and the red original function. In fact, you can see they meet right here at negative 8, negative 8. If we look at a table, I've already created a, a table here of both functions, you'll see that the points, just as the variables did, the points trans are transposed. So the x and y values, the, the inputs and the outputs are transposed. You have 0, negative 4 here, but then on the inverse, negative 4 is 0. They transpose, again, switch. So negative, um, so 2, negative 3, negative 3, 2. 4, negative 2, negative 2, 4. 6, negative 1, negative 1, 6. The tables in and of themselves are not sufficient to say, oh, these are inverses. We need the equation to do that. But the tables are pretty good evidence that this is probably going to be an inverse function. So now we can see if we have access to Desmos, we can always create our inverse functions this way. In a future video, I will show you how to solve the inverse function for y, and then we can compare and contrast the algebra of the two equations. Thank you, and see you next time.